state has, has makes creates their own law, their own statutes and codes. But at the end of the day, they still have to govern through the United States Constitution, within the bounds of the Constitution. Where in the world does it say they can they can deviate from the Constitution? If anybody, please show me where in the Constitution, in the Bill of Rights, in the Federalist Papers. We're in the Declaration of Independence. Where does it say anywhere that they can create unconstitutional laws and make them legal? And we have a prime example where we have Anna J. Brown right here operating under Admiralty. This is not me, this is them. And under Anna J. Brown, she's, she, she's not exercising the, our constitutional rights because we've seen her already practicing off the bench. Is she one of the judges presiding currently uh, over the political prisoners that are in federal court right now for standing up at the Burns, Oregon, Malheur Refuge? Yes, matter of fact, she is. And, 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 and she's violating everybody's due process. Uh, not just violating due process, but there's no due process. This is like a kangaroo court where she does everything that she wants at her will. Where in the Constitution does it give her the authority to do what she wants? Not of the people's court, not her court. The people own that court through our tax dollars. The federal court? Who holds the federal court accountable? Well, the funny thing is, you can't hold her accountable. Because guess what? Through her title of nobility, let me bring this out real quick. We have to, we, this needs to come out. Is there a code of ethics or anything that a federal judge would be held accountable to at all? That's what I would like to know. Because 80% of the cases that she presided, she ruled in favor of the government. But there's a token behind her ruling in favor of the government under five you, uh, U.S. Code, she gets a $5,000 incentive for every case she rules on behalf of the government. Wait a minute. These are federal codes now, not local and state codes. Uh, ma ma no, these are, these are, these are, le uh, legisl uh, these are, legis obviously the legislators created these codes, uh, these codes, because remember, they're not laws, they're codes. Codes that they created in regards for their benefit, not our benefit, and using our tax dollars for them to benefit. So we got, let's say, prime example. Anna J. Brown, through her financial disclosure forms, as we can see, we have a couple, we have numerous, from 2002 to 2011, where she is, not according to me, according to her, she is the Oregon chapter of Federal Bar Association. She is also the Oregon Federal Bar Association. She's a judge and in the Bar Association? Obviously, guess what? We all know that the American Bar Association is a government agency. I mean, a, a corporation, not a government agency. And this is what we've been dumbed down. And we have to understand that the Bar Association has infiltrated all three branches of government at the, and, and our learning institutions. At the same time, enslaving us using their law, their, their codes and statutes under Admiralty Law or uh, 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 Maritime uh, uh, using... Um, the law of the sea, uh, commercial law. These laws are unconstitutional. And we, the American people, need to understand that. We, the American people, need to learn that we've been enslaved through their, through their codes and statutes. In admiralty law, in maritime law, how would that possibly be applying to land management criminal cases exactly? Well, under their laws, again, we go back to TRT, the Technical Review uh, Team, and the ORS, which is the Oregon Revised Statutory, they're on constitutional laws. They're, those laws go, uh, basically gives them the right to steal people's land, which is a violation of the Bill of Rights itself under, under the Fourth, uh, Fourth Amendment of the Bill of Rights. The maritime laws and admiralty laws, what exactly do they apply to then? That, that is a good question. I know you said commercial Correct. And, and land of the sea. Correct. Um, and yet they're in the federal courts. With, Correct. With people currently being tried in three years now uh, uh, 
for U.S. codes of different types in federal court, uh, citizens, private owners, other corporations. Corporations would be commercial, but a, a person, are they, are they a corporation? Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, through our birth certificate, it appears that these bar members, or the creation of the bar, enslaved us through the, bar, through the birth certificate. If you look at the birth certificate, there's going to be three words that are going to stand, stand out. One is note, N-O-T-E, and the other word is vital, V-I-T-A-L. And there's one more that, that, that right now I can't remember. But under this instrument, because we got to understand that instrument is a paper, is how they enslaved us. And using and the word vital means a contract. But a contract with who? And the word note. We all know a note like a notepad, but it's not a, a note like a notepad. It's a note, meaning paper of money. Monies. That's how they. That's how um, they use to enslave us. So infants are being contracted. We're we're be, yeah we're being created as a corporation. This is why I I believe through the Admiralty Law is where they got us on a corporation and uh you are consider us as a corporation. Totally violating Article Six, Section Two, Clause Two. So you know, so is Bur is Oregon in in, in the ocean? And if it's not in the ocean, then why are we practicing admiralty, land, admiralty time? Are we not supposed to be governed by, by the United States Constitution? Article 6, Section 2, Clause 2, the law of the land, the supreme law of the land. For we the people. For we the people. Because guess what? It's us at the end of the day. It's we the people the, the, is why, why we're here. Is why we all should rally behind, behind this agenda. Because guess what? At the end of the day... It's not going to, might not affect us today, but I guarantee you it's going to affect our children and the future and the direction this country is going to go. So what, what, what future are we going to leave for our children? If, uh, if we allow these criminals to continue doing what they're doing, stealing people's property. I mean, read the Fourth Amendment of the Bill of Rights. Look what it says. But then again, how are you supposed to have due process when they infiltrated all three branches of government? And you're going to go to a judge where she makes money, where she profits, where she has investments in gold, in land, in real estate? Does she specifically have any investments or ties or special interests uh, with the BLM or for? Absolutely. If we were here, uh, this is Anna J. Brown. Right here, two, two patents where she has it. These are not my patents. I didn't create this. This is, this is, anybody can get it, but the funny thing is when you go to the county recorder's office and you call them to get additional information, you can't get that. In order to get that, somebody's going to have to subpoena her to appear and produce these documents. Or some, or some private investigator can do additional research. But the documents don't lie. I didn't, I didn't create these. I didn't fabricate these. The, the evidence speaks for, right now the evidence is going to speak for itself. And these patents, are they patents for her apparent land that she owns? Are they her own patents for her land? Yeah, it's her name here, Anna J. Brown, and she has her patent number. The patents, are they, are they, do they have a specific design for the land, um, an architecture to them that, um, that lay out the codes and regulations and, and laws of the local and county? Are they BLM related? Are they regulated by some special agency? <laughs> well, it's funny. She actually purchased these from the BLM. Literally purchase them. I want to know the last person that purchased a BLM that can patent that land. Meaning the, the common man. Not a person of, a, 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 of within, within a, a member of the Congress or the Senate or the judicial branch. Or an appointed position. You know, through the title of nobility. But we can't, I would like to see the, the, the you know, I would like to see an American that can come out to me. A normal American, a hard working American that can come and say, hey, you know what, my land is patented. How much land did she purchase from the BLM? Uh, that's a good question, but we do know that she paid cash. Uh, uh, but something more significant is that I believe she got her money through the U through five U.S. code, where she benefits in ruling eighty percent of the times with the government and the BLM and the Department of Fish and Wildlife and uh, U.S. Forestry. So anybody that comes and wants to go ahead and sue any of these three agencies under Anna J. Brown. You're not going to win, because not what I said. I'm just reading what the information, what the evidence is. And I, I, am, I, I didn't write these. I didn't create these. This is what's been downloaded. This is, 
Do you know by any chance what's surrounding her land? Is it more wildlife or BLM owned land that is surrounding her, or is she surrounded by other private residents? Uh, that's a good question. I didn't get into the details, but I guarantee you I wouldn't be surprised if there's minerals in there. Or I wouldn't be surprised that she's using that land to create some real estate in which she has investments in real estate and creating buildings. And so, and, and then go ahead and rent those, build, uh, let's say, apartments out to somebody or, sell, or, or do some deal with some uh, builder. What triggers you to speculate that um, uranium or minerals of any sort would be an interest um, for anyone on that land? Well, obviously, she has, she's, she's amazing because all her investments, most of her investments here, here are all related to Wall Street, gold. Silver, uranium, energy. This is not me. This is her. This is what she did but printed on her financial disclosure forms. I didn't do any of this. All I did was just research it and followed her money. Everything she put on a uh, financial disclosure form. So under Admiralty Law, this is not my this is not, not my web page. I never created this web page. This web page was well, I, I took a picture of this web page from the federal court website. And if you go to Admiralty Procedures, because they have Admiralty Procedures, which is a, the law of the ocean. This is not mine, so I want to articulate this to the American people and how they're raping us. Not, not, that, not that I went, but if you go into the Black Law Dictionary, their definition of Admiralty is a court exercising jurisdiction over a maritime cause, both civil and criminal, and marine affairs, commerce and navigation, controversies arising out of acts done upon rela relating to the sea and over questions of a prize. In other words, in English, the, ex and ex and the executive department of states which preside over the naval force of, of kingdom. The normal head is a Lord High Admiral, admiral but, in, but in practice, the function of the great office are discharged by severals. Now, as we, as we stated, are, is Oregon in the sea? So why 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 are we why why is our patriots being tried in an admiralty courtroom when at the end of the day Article Six Section Two Clause Two states the supreme law of the land? Where does it say in the Constitution to go into admiralty? According to the United States Constitution laws, even through her admiralty laws, she needs to disqualify herself. And she doesn't need to just qualify herself, but she, did. she needs to remove herself and then also have a common law grand jury investigate on her. On all the cases that she presided and, presided and ruled in favor of the government, almost 80%. Under, 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 under discharge disqualification, under 28 U.S., which is a federal law for disqualification of a judge, not me, but this, she'd be removing herself. Conflict of interest as we just demonstrated. What does that one say there? If you can read that to the audience, please. Uh, by terms, uh, section 144 applies only to district judges or in compare as uh, applies to any ju justice, judge, or uh, magistrate judge of, di of, of, the, di of the United States. A literal, a literal reading of 144 suggests that a party can force disqual disqualification automatically simply by filing an affidavit alleging the, the, the judge is biased against the uh, offense or in favor of the offense opponent. Well, we already seen that. Because guess what? She's always helping the government. The, government. the um, interests that she seems to have financially through these stocks that she's purchased, like gold and uranium and other minerals, um, these would be corporations then. And would apply to maritime as a corporation or commercial, but what does that have to do with private land owners and criminal uh, laws on land? Well, this is why we're here. That's what we're trying to figure out. Let's let allow the, we, the people to answer that question. And let, uh, let them tell us what they think.